All right, recording has started, and this is the February 9th, 2023 Cross Plane Community Meeting. Um, I will go ahead and share the agenda doc link into the Zoom chat window right now. So folks have direct access to the agenda doc, and people can either add themselves as attendees or add discussion topics for things that people might want to be getting into. Um, all right, so uh, I think biggest news is that since the last community meeting, we got the 1.11 release out. Uh, that was arguably the largest release that Crossplane has had in quite some time. Um, you know, there are definitely some big features that were included in it, um, you know, such as composition functions and then being able to patch from the environments. Uh, with, oh, Max just joined in too. So Max, we're just talking about your, uh, your wonderful environment config feature. Um, so there's a whole bunch of awesome stuff that went into 1.11. Um, so thank you everybody for that effort that went into building those features and testing things, the document, massive documentation rewrite from Pete. Um, a lot of folks it invested a lot of time into making what I believe to be a, a fairly successful release um, and you know, kind of great momentum carrying into 2023 here for the project. So now that 1.11 is behind us, uh, we are moving on to 1.12. We have a regular release cadence within the Crossplane project of once a quarter. So the 1.12 release date is expected to be on April 25th, so the, the last week of April. Um, I think that is right after KubeCon uh, Amsterdam. I think it's the week after that. So uh, that's the time frame that we're looking at there. We are just getting started on, you know, figuring out the priorities and figuring out what folks want to work on, et cetera. So we can talk about, um, you know, things that uh, the release board and the roadmap board here is up to date. Um, so, you know, I think things are roughly ordered, you know, top to bottom in terms of priorities. Um, I think some of the, the top things on my mind that uh, that haven't really gotten some work on them yet because uh, you know observe only resources that's that's still getting a lot, lots of attention from Hassan that's moving along a lot um, that some of the things that we haven't really put a lot of time and investment into yet are two big topics uh, that I think are you know definitely affecting the community and uh, would have a large impact on the continued adoption and success of the project uh, which are uh, you know, the, the issues we have are still around uh, CRD scaling and being able to, uh, you know, install multiple providers and, you know, have uh, your cluster, you know, usable, et cetera. Um, there's been a ton of work on that, obviously, and a lot of it's been upstream as well. Um, but there's still some things that we can, we can do at the crossplane level to improve that situation. And then ordered deletion is another issue uh, that um, I think can, can get some attention soon. So, those are some of the things. So this is you can look at this in order here. I think uh, those are some of the things that I think are somewhat important, and I would definitely want to consider for 1.12. They are not things that I'm saying could fit right away into 1.12. Like easy, we'll get that in, no problem. You know, just as we're starting the milestone planning now, I think those things those are things that have impact and would be um, worthwhile for us to consider. You know, having as a priority for 1.12. So I kind of wanted to, you know, with that statement there. Uh, check in with folks and see, uh, you know, if there's things that are not on our radar here uh, for things that are important to the community, but, you know, not necessarily uh, included in the priority here. So we can kind of think about that. So is there anything that's on people's mind that's missing from this release board, from the roadmap? Uh, what's, what's, what's on people's minds? Hey, Jared. Hey, so I'm I'm going to be able to pick up the um, the six store integration again. Um, there was a about a, a, a couple of bye weeks there um, while I had some other things on my plate, but um, I I I I am not necessarily um, I'm not necessarily uh, fully understanding. Um, how, whether or not we need to increase the scope of of the work that I had done there, Dan has given me feedback. I'm going to start to pick away at that feedback. If the current implementation, um, with the comments that he he has given me, is sufficient, I could see that landing in 1.12 because I'm I'm probably going to polish it up over the next week. So, 
um, I'm, it, it's open for discussion whether or not it makes sense for 112 or, or beyond. I definitely uh, love for it to be in for 1.12. Um, and I'm happy to do some like synchronous uh, meetings, that sort of thing, if you want, along with, you know, anyone else uh, who, who's interested in that functionality. Yeah, there are some open design questions. Um, but again, like without increasing the scope of what we've already spoken about, I feel comfortable with the body of work. It, it, the, 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 the last uh, um, poll request that I had put in that you actually commented on, Dan, does include things like um, keyless and the ability to wire up um, multiple different static keys. So, so I, th I believe that most folks' design issues are incorporated, but um, we can revisit the one pager and expand upon it uh, for further iteration. I just think that what the, the what the um, the initial stab was intended to be was um, to allow for my use case primarily, which is to um, you know, create known good builds of configuration and provider packages for validation that they were created by Autodesk employees. Um, and and that's kind of like the scope that I'm I'm targeting right now. Yeah, definitely uh, encourage keeping it as scoped as possible, right? Like the smaller the implementation, the easier it's going to be to to uh, ensure it gets into 1.12. Um, mm -hmm. So if there's parts we want to shave away from it, we also, you know, uh, I think as discussed on um, the uh, the PR a little bit um, and in the design, like putting this by an alpha flag de-risks it a little bit. Um, so we have some leeway there we can work that's, with. That's exactly what I'm currently working on is removing it from a new type entirely and moving it to the alpha flag, which was my naivete that that caused that problem. Yeah, and um, you know that that's it's pretty common as well to Jesse, uh, and not unreasonable, um, you know, to have a scoped release uh, initially with the functionality, and then get feedback uh, from you know other people's use cases, and you know if it's if it's meeting what their needs are, or you know is, is have some oversight or um, you know miss miss gaps and stuff like that. So that's totally reasonable to scope it to what's appropriate and get it into v dot one v one dot twelve. Uh, that sounds good to me. We I do have it as marked as uh, 1.12 right now. Um, right. That's not necessarily like, hey, you have to do this 1.12. Like, you know, we'll we'll do what we can to invest in it and, and give you support and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's on the board for 1.12 and with the hopes of getting something out for in the release. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I feel comfortable with the body of work that's there. So I um, see an issue with that. That sounds awesome, Jesse. Uh, then Valerie had a question about observe only resources uh, in 1.12. And so, um, you know, the we have a bit of a status update that's coming uh, later on that one. Uh, the design is, um, you know, Nick and Hassan are meeting synchronously today to try to finalize on some lingering outstanding discussions on the design there. Uh, as the design is currently proposed, uh, the scope of the implementation uh, is not massive. Uh, so I think that it's something that we're targeting that is a priority and we're targeting to be able to include in 1.12. Um, but I think there is still some outstanding conversation there about what exactly would be the scope of uh, of the final implementation because we do want to get it right. Um, so there's there's a bit more to figure out there. And if Hassan wants to add more, then that's, that's appropriate too. And Jason, do you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering if that's based currently mostly on what Nick's approach had been to that as well, because we had discussed that before around, um, or I guess we don't know, I guess we'll see when they get done that conversation. I'm curious to hear the output of that of the, as to what the how that implementation goes forward because it was kind of predicated on composition functions, right? Or no, weren't they kind of tied together? Uh, I at least with the way that I was reading the implementation, uh, the, the design uh, as proposed right now, I don't think it's predicated on composition functions. Um, Hassan, if you want to add more about that, uh, that could be useful. um yeah yeah basically like there are uh we, we are listing a couple of uh use cases for uh the fun functionality and uh the design doc uh, aims to cover most of them uh at least like uh whenever it's it is it makes sense but there are a couple of use cases especially 
to name it, uh, like uh, filtering and uh, querying part, uh, which is another functionality available in the Terraform data sources. Uh, we are kind of uh, thinking that uh, th those functionality will be better uh, uh, fitted to the composition functions, but overall the observe only design functional, uh, observe only managed resources functionality will be implemented as part of the proposed design. Uh, and Bob, did you have something to add to that? You came off mute. Oh, sorry. Well, while I have you, Bob, <laughs> I think there was there was a couple of um, issues that uh, you were thinking about tackling in 1.12 or in the near near term time frame as well. I cannot, for the life of me, remember what it was. Something about being able to um, have control over the connection detail information or something. Was that what it was? What was it, Bob? Um, so there's one for the composite update, basically ha uh, having a default composite update. Ah. Sorry, composition update policy um, to go along with composition revisions um, so that you can specify in the XRD whether you want um, manual or automatic composition update policy. Because um, right now, the way it is right now, you know, it defaults to automatic and you have to put in the claim whether you want it to be manual or, you know, or automatic if you want it to be manual. Um, but even then it doesn't cascade down through a nested composition. So you then have to go into all your compositions and set it there as well. So having it on the XRD, I think will be a big help. Um, so that was one. And then the other one was the composite delete policy, basically the same thing today. You have to specify um, in the claim that you want the composite delete policy to be foreground. Otherwise it's going to default to background. Um, it would be really helpful to have that in the XRD as well so that the XRD itself can default to foreground and um, you know that'll be used if the user doesn't specify anything else. There you go. Yeah, and it's these two issues right here, right, Bob? That's it. Awesome. Uh, so did you, how do you feel then about us going ahead and putting that in the 1.12 milestone as well, uh, since you're planning on working on it soon. And then, you know, as the milestone unfolds, milestone unfolds, then we can, you know, reevaluate if it's, it's something to include or not. But do you, uh, do you want to add it in right now? Yeah, I think it's fine to put it in. Um, I'd really like to get to it. Um, the only thing is um, there's some magic happening in the whole XRD processing stuff that I don't fully understand. And so I may need some guidance or, um, and holding in terms of exactly how what the implementation should look like. But. Yep, that's totally reasonable, Bob. And I have a fair amount of confidence that you'll be able to, uh, you know, get get to the details that you uh, you want to to feel to feel comfortable with it. Uh, so I will go ahead and update those two issues to include those in the one twelve milestone. Uh, and Dan, you have your hand up. That's very very polite of you, sir. <laughs> uh, well, I just. Uh... This is not specific to that, so I don't want to interrupt flow, which is why I raised my hand. But um, I do have uh, something else that I just added into the uh, 1.12 milestone that I realized wasn't in quite yet that I want to chat about. Yeah, go for it. I'm on the cool. other screen here updating uh, Bob's issues here. Cool. Um, OK, so the uh, I just added two uh, issues um, into the 1.12. Uh, one of them is uh, revision resource ownership transition. So that's for uh, folks who have uh, upgraded providers before and seen that like you can't uh, you can't upgrade this provider because you know a previous revision owns uh, this resource and it can't establish control. Uh, this is not a blocking thing, um, but essentially what happens there is the previous revision uh, gets deleted before it's able to transition from controller to owner of a CRD or XRD or composition. Um, so we should be able to um, include that in the deletion before we remove the finalizer. Um, so that's a small one. Uh, the larger one is one that's been around for quite a long time. Uh, and I wanna bring this to attention um, early on in this cycle and that's the provider runtime interface issue. Um, so for folks who saw in Slack or in the release notes, uh, at the end of 1.11, we made the decision to deprecate a uh, controller config, um, which sounds really scary uh, because a lot of people depend on it. 
Um, it is an alpha resource, but it was introduced before um, our Fisher, official um, feature lifecycle policy. Uh, if it had been introduced after that, it would be off by default, right? So you wouldn't be able to use controller config. Um, but because it wasn't right, it uh, it has been on and people have been using it. So despite it being an alpha resource where the contract is, we can drop it or change it at any time. Uh, we obviously don't want to do that uh, if the community is depending on something, which we have pretty strong evidence uh, that they are. So we've deprecated it. That is a notice only. There is no change in functionality. Um, what we'd like to do, though, is move towards offering uh, potentially multiple implementations. Likely the main one, it'll be sort of like the composition function runner where we have a default that we deploy um, that will look a lot like the existing uh, uh, functionality for providers where we just create a deployment. Um, for each revision. Uh, so that will probably be the default, but we would like to give folks some more functionality there because we've had people continually wanting to expand controller config and be able to do interesting things uh, such as like IRSA or you know various different runtimes for providers. Um, recently, this has expanded scope a little bit, uh, potentially uh, with uh, like external secret stores and some of that. You can see uh, Hassan has a good comment um on here um uh kind of talking about how something like this may be useful in that case as well um so this may expand to more of like a, a general runtime interface that we use for uh, a couple different features um but this is something that we would at least like to have a design in for and if possible um an alpha implementation which would mean that you could continue to use the controller config exactly as it is um, but we might also, you know, have a, a feature flagged uh, version available where you could provide alternative implementations. So no design is available now. There is a lot of issue or a lot of uh, uh, context in this issue um, for folks to be able to kind of read up on the motivation. But if you have early comments even before the design doc is out there, uh, please feel free to go ahead and drop uh, comments on there um, and we can start conversation. And if needed, um, we can develop kind of like a SIG channel or something like that. Um, keep that conversation going. Um, cool. That's all just, for me. Max, did you have a question uh, related yeah, to this effort? Just, just question, uh, to what you just said. So um, when you said different uh, provider runtimes, you mm -hmm. refer to different Kubernetes configs effectively being used to deploy them or yeah, so it would be uh, basically moving the logic for how a, a provider or maybe a pluggable secret store or something like that gets run. It could be as simple as there's uh, multiple different uh, implementations that all create deployments but allow you to configure different things. Could be that some create deployments, some create pods. Could be that some use AWS Lambda functions to run providers somehow or, or you know, some external yeah. container service. Um, it's really just saying, hey, we're, we're not going to cut off people from uh, the functionality they want. And we're also not going to be as concerned about that in core cross plane where we want to make the happy path uh, easy, but give you those escape hatches if you need them. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. It's, so Dan, do you, um, do you already have some ideas about scope or phases, et cetera, for this? Like, is this something that, oh, you know, it, to, from the outside, it looks massive, right? Uh, is this something that, uh, you know, in your opinion, is like, oh, yeah, this is an easy, easy lift for 1.12. We could slide it on in there. Or is it like, we'll maybe we'll have a first person of it in 1.12 and then more comes later on? Or what, what is your thinking, you know, very early milestone thinking, you know, no commitment here, obviously. Yeah, so uh, there are a few layers of hidden complexity in this effort. Um, so a good example, well, actually, let's just say if if we just wanted to run um, uh, containers, uh, it might not be that hard because you can think of if we took the existing functionality right now where there's a cross-plane controller config API and we instead said there's a default cross-plane implementation of the runtime interface and it brings a controller config API, then you could configure that you could still create your controller configs essentially. And all that would be needed would be for um, Crossplane to basically say, hey, run this container. Um, and we might need to say if this is for various interfaces, right? Uh, this is a pluggable secret store, this is a provider. And then the implementation would decide, oh, okay, these are all the different ways I can be configured to deploy the provider. So 
I think there is a relatively straightforward um, implementation that basically just takes what we do today and moves the config kind of to the implementation rather than core crossplane. Um, areas where you start to uncover some more hidden complexity are things like RBAC, where you know we create providers and they install a bunch of resources, and then we say, um, "Hey, uh, this provider uh, needs access to these resources it installs." And the RBAC manager does that. Um, you know, right now people sometimes deploy without the RBAC manager, uh, but we need to think about what that happy path looks like um, and whether, you know, if you're running in different uh, scenarios, that means you need more or less information about the provider because the implementation of the interface may not be able to talk to, you know, the provider object or something like that to request more RBAC. Um, so there's a lot of considerations about how you give access to things. Um, that will need to be rolled into this. Got it, Dan. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Thanks for explaining it that way. All right. So uh, that also then, Dan, I believe you uh, added that then to 1.12 as at least in the preliminary, you know, investigations and design and things like that. Uh, so those issues are on the board as well and uh, in the backlog column. And, uh, you know, feel free to follow up on those and, and move them through the board as you make progress on them then. Uh, okay, sweet. And then I so I think that um, you know we talked about priorities. Uh, we got some good feedback on a few things. And then so maybe the the other question then um, is uh, are there any other ongoing efforts uh, from folks uh, you know making contributions? Uh, maybe Max, maybe you've got something that you're picking up or you're you're working on right now that you wanted to also include in the board because we got one. We got some from Jesse. We got some from Bob. Uh, any other contributions out there that we want to include on the board uh, it's for official tracking? I'm not from my side today. I actually, uh, so I, I just came here to uh, chime in and see how you plan. Um, because like I currently face the problem that <laughs> we have deployment scenarios of Crossplane where we, where we have maybe multiple API servers and um, I think like what 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 you just heard might solve a couple of those challenges. So um, we'd be happy to contribute from SAP side here uh, as well. Also, that I can say we have a implementation of the usage tracking um, in a couple of our providers running. So we'd be happy to contribute with uh, the roadblocks we faced. And um, yeah, that's that's just what I wanted to uh, tell you guys. Awesome. That sounds good. Then, yeah. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. Uh, all right. So um, yeah. So then, so this is you know very beginning of um, of the milestone here, and so you know we'll continue taking feedback, and you know, can work on some things asynchronously as well on Slack and, and GitHub uh, because um, you know not everyone is here at the community meeting. Um, so we will continue to take opinions and feedback on the GitHub issues and on Slack, and we'll keep fleshing out this one twelve milestone. But um, I'm definitely looking forward to rolling off the uh, momentum from 1.12, sorry, 1.11 into another awesome release with 1.12. So keep it up, everybody. Um, all right. So that is milestone planning stuff, I think. So let's keep on rolling. Uh, so provider releases uh, and other, other releases, there's a new, a fresh round of uh, Upon's official providers for AWS, UCP, and Azure that went out, I think, just a couple of days ago. So those continue to uh, roll out on a regular basis. Um, the Let's see, uh, is Christopher Har here today? I don't think I saw or heard him yet, so maybe not. Uh, but Christopher made a new release of um, this competition generator uh, uh, tool. So that's um, that was just last week and some, some new fixes and some new functionality in there that folks can check out, linked here in the doc. And then uh, a new GitHub provider as well uh, was, was published. Um, and did, did that, is that an update that went to the marketplace or is that the first time it got into the marketplace? That was the first time. Oh, sweet. Nice. So that is also a, uh, oh man, that's fantastic. So that's awesome to see that in there as well. And hopefully uh, we can get some feedback on that one and keep on uh, making it more useful for folks. 
Um, everyone is welcome to if there's other recent provider releases or advancements, um, you know, you can drop them here in the agenda doc or talk about them. Um, but you know, it's an open space in the agenda doc here for for recent releases from everybody. All right, uh, so let's move keep on moving down through the agenda then we're about halfway through the hour. So uh, now, so for some vendor updates. Um, so, you know, Upbound engineers are working on a few different things. We already talked about observe only resources. Uh, so I think this one, nothing else to share there. Um, Ezgi, I don't think she's here today either. I don't think so. But uh, she has got a first PR now open about uh, having pluggable secret stores. So this is in cross plane runtime. And this is the first PR of, I think, a sequence of a, at least a couple. Uh, but the implementation on that has started and will be allow be able to open up the doors for other secret store implementations uh, or support such as like AWS Secret Manager and you know all the like um, the other cloud provider ones and and whatnot. So that's going to be really helpful, I think, uh, to beyond the initial support that we had for Vault. Um, so that looking forward to that more of that coming, and then there had been progress uh, on the uh, further a further validation of compositions with, via webhook. So instead of you know, your, your composition being submitted and then later on down, downstream uh, it not working because there was an issue with it, this would be upfront validated and um, you know, rejected if it's, if it's an, you know, invalid shifting that left. Uh, Philippe has been working on that and has some proposals that he's been sharing with the team. Um, and we'll see more of that uh, as the 1.12 uh, release unfolds. So I was, I was covering this because I think John was not able to make it today, uh, but that's yeah, everything that I believe currently right now, uh, the upbound engineers are, are uh, focusing on that as of the last week or so. All right, um, so a couple cool things here in um, like amongst the ecosystem. Uh, this particular one I thought was quite interesting because uh, it was a fairly deep dive, I think, on how to get some interesting uh, insight and metrics into health of cross-plane and the control plane and all the resources it's managing. So I think that's definitely worth a read from everybody. It was very interesting. So the link is here in the agenda doc. And there are some other uh, issue, uh, things here. I think th I think this one, this blog post here, is a, it's a, a repost of one that I had done for the new stack at the end of last year. So I don't think that's super new, but is interesting, at least for folks getting first getting into cross-plane. And then also, uh, this is a webinar that I think Victor had done with the CodeFresh people just last week. Um, I may need some help from someone to figure out how to access it because they did it on Twitch and Twitch just, I don't understand the point of Twitch after you live stream something because it seems like nothing is ever like kept for posterity. So I don't know where it lives. Maybe it's somewhere else. If somebody does find a permanent link, please add it to the agenda doc because I don't know where it is. Yeah, that's truly uh, confounding to me, the Twitch model, <laughs> but it, apparently it's quite popular. I know you can save clips, but uh, I don't know why people don't just use YouTube, but anyway. <laughs> Dan, you, you're now getting old, my friend. <laughs> that is the first old person statement I've ever heard from you. <laughs> Welcome All to these the club. kids on Twitch. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, so we talked about this one last time, uh, and I think we're, we're getting very close to wrapping this up. Uh, Philippe you, has proposed um, a security vulnerability dis disclosure policy for the Crossplane project. Uh, this is important as we mature the project to continue to invest in our security posture. So I think that all the feedback has been addressed uh, by Philippe, and then we got some uh, some of security experts that had weighed in on it as well. So Philippe, there's no more outstanding feedback on that one, like from Adam uh, as well too, right? From Betalogix? No, I think not. It's uh, it's ready for review. Awesome. So great. So hopefully we can get that merged in this week um, and, and, and roll out that policy uh, for any upcoming security vulnerabilities that, um, that are disclosed to us. That will be, that will come in very much, very much handy. That'll come in handy for us because we will be uh, undertaking a full security audit uh, via the CNCF. Um, you know, they, they are helping out, or they will be helping out with uh, a third party security uh, vendor who will do a full audit of the project and any vulnerabilities we find there, it'll be nice to have that disclosure process in place to roll out with those in addition to um, anything that is or was found uh, with the fuzz testing effort as well that's getting wrapped up. 
So, Philippe, thanks for taking the initiative on that one, man. Uh, and I appreciate your efforts in, con in contributing that. So, KubeCon updates. So, KubeCon's a couple months away from us uh, in Amsterdam, and the CFP acceptances were announced this week. So, good news is that a maintainer track session was accepted. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't have us. Uh, we are an awesome project. So, Christopher Haar and I will be teaming up uh, to present on Crossplane in Amsterdam. Um, also, really good news is that we uh, applied to participate in the Contrib Fest as well, and that was also accepted. So we are going to be getting in a room together, and uh, cross-playing contributors and members of the community can uh, we can work through some synchronous things together. We can talk about um, you know designs that are out at that time. Um, and I'll also be running a new contributor enablement session as well. So folks that are kind of sitting on the sidelines and in, interested in getting into contributing to Crossplane, we could do some hands-on stuff together uh, where we get our env development environment set up. We uh, start learning about, you know, the different parts of the code base and, uh, you know, kind of get some more folks uh, feeling good to um, be writing code and contributing PRs uh, to Crossplane. So I'm super excited about that. I will need some support from that, um, you know, if to to help out, like you know, hands on with the labs or maybe presenting some materials as well, uh, running a small breakout session, something like that. Uh, we have ninety minutes to do some cool work together. So if folks want to participate and support that effort as well, uh, I would love that. Um, Dan, I'm probably looking at you already of somebody that would maybe be willing to help out with that and support that. Um, and two thumbs up. Okay, not even just one. So uh, Dan's going to be involved in that as well. Um, so yeah, so and anybody who wants to participate in that, either on the, you know, attending side and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, being there and learning and, and, and that kind of thing, that's super, super welcome. I'm really going to appreciate folks uh, being there for that. And then also on the uh, teaching side as well. So folks that can help and support um, on that side too. So anybody who wants to participate, just ping me um, as I'm planning this thing out and we'll get it all figured out. And then the other question was uh, trying to figure out uh, what other talks people got accepted. I know Jesse got your talk got accepted, so you're on the on the schedule and on the agenda there. So uh, congratulations on that one, Jesse. Good job on that, and def definitely excited to see that one too. Anybody else? Dan, you got a talk accepted, right? Who else got accepted? I did. It will. Uh, it it'll actually yeah it'll have some cross plane bits in there, so. <laughs> Not on the last it, day, either. I know, it's, it's not, a miracle. Oh, it's not God. the last session of the conference. <laughs> there might be people there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you've been, you've been, yeah, I don't know why you kept getting that slot, Dan, but uh, w when is yours? Is it what day? I have no idea. I didn't know it wasn't the last until Jesse said that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's news to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're on Tuesday morning. Hey, hey. that's oh, good. Early also, er, yeah, early and then you can relax. <laughs> nice. Uh, cool. So then uh, other sessions that uh, are mentioned in Crossplane, there looks like there's one from DigitalOcean. Looks like there's one from CodeFresh. Uh, we know about Jesse's uh, session as well. Uh, there's one from TV2 Denmark, um, which I'm super interested in hearing more about that, um, what they're talking about. And then, uh, and then, and then um, Christopher and I are presenting on the maintainer track as well. Oh, that looks like that's the last session of the con. God, gosh darn it. Okay, well, we took your slot, Dan, and we are the last session of the conference now. Hey, last, last time y'all were last session uh, in uh, Spain, though, remember it was packed. Oh, that's so. right. That was, that was in Valencia. Yeah, there pe people yeah. were able to, to show up. Okay, we'll figure that out. And then uh, it looks like Contrib Fest uh, here is on uh, Wednesday, so we're early in the week there. So that, that should be cool there. So um, yeah, that's the schedule that we see so far. Uh, and congratulations to folks who got their talks accepted. And uh, anybody else who got a talk accepted, feel free to share that with us uh, right here as well. All right, keep on cruising, keep on cruising. So uh, very recently, I, um, you know, this is insert, what did I just do? Um, let me move this out of the way, Zoom. Yeah, so in service of continuing to mature the project and, um, and work towards a graduation with the CNCF, uh, we needed to have a better sense of adopters of the project. 
So it's a fairly standard uh, process to have an adopters.md file in the, in the main repository. So we've created that and we've given a couple different options for folks to be able to add their uh, usage uh, as well to, the, to this document here. Um, we have a number of PRs open for people adding into it. So we're kind of working through those and going through those in order that they were, um, that they were open. So we're kind of respecting uh, first in, first out sort of thing. But uh, if, if anybody wants to continue adding their, uh, add, add their usage as well, like it is very encouraged and very open and it does help continue to mature the project and, uh, and grow, our, grow our base there. So very grateful to everyone who's already contributed to that and looking forward for more. Um, I, see, I see some uh, mentioned in the chat there too. So sounds good to me. Uh, okay. And, oh, also, sorry. Yeah. Note that there are multiple options here. So you don't necessarily just have to open a PR you can send an email to the steering committee. Uh, there's a form you can fill out as well. So there's three different options um, and take your pick. All right. Uh, Pete, uh, our wonderful documentation engineer, I don't think is able to make it today, but he did want me to bring up this particular topic here where um, Pete is going to, is considering adding in linting to the docs, uh, which will enforce some style guidelines and uh, you know various other ways of keeping the docs consistent. So Pete wanted to just put this on people's radars. So if you have any questions or comments about it, uh, please do go ahead and uh, probably just comment on this issue. I think uh, so. Pete can can handle it directly. Um, you know, I don't. I'm not super up to date on on Veil and how it works, so uh, I'm not a great resource for that. But Pete definitely is, and. Um, and yeah, feel free to comment on this issue uh, if you if you want to know more about how we'll be uh, implementing this linting in the docs repo. <clears throat> All right, and let's see what else. What else? Uh, so a really awesome tool uh, was was released, and um, there was a, a talk about it. So there's a, a, a linting tool for Crossplane itself now. Is anybody in the call who's contributing to this that wants to talk about it so I don't steal your thunder? I guess maybe not. Got lots of people, but not one of the contributors to this. Um, so yeah, so I think this was driven by uh, some of the uh, of Jan's team and some of the Accenture folks. Uh, so um, then, yeah. So this is really useful to be able to kind of also in the same vein of shifting left and verifying, uh, you know, your your platform definitions, your cross your composition uh, definitions, and all that sort of stuff. So really, really useful uh, tool here. That's I think it's in its early stages, and there's more to come. There's a bit of a roadmap to find and such. So it has been uh, donated to the Crossplane Contrib organization. So there's a neutral home to collaborate around it right now. So uh, definitely looking forward to more interesting stuff coming out of this and hearing people's success with it. Um, so thank you very much for the folks uh, behind this as well and contributing this. This is really pretty cool. Uh, and there also is a talk uh, from the folks there too that was at Fosdem uh, last week in Brussels. Um, and I wish I'd been able to make it there, but that would have uh, been really cool to see. Uh, and this link here will take you to the talk. I think the recording is posted there as well. So you can watch the full talk also and get more context. <clears throat> uh, okay, last uh, last two items here is uh, there was a call out for just getting some feedback from folks that may have already been using the composition validation webhook. It has been it's I don't know maybe it's had a couple of releases that it was that it's been uh, available, but it is turned off by default as we are doing more effort to invest in the composition validation. Uh, as a whole, um, we will turn this on by default. And so we just wanted to get some feedback from folks. If anybody's already been using it and it's working for them, it's not working for them. Uh, if there's any feedback from folks that already have experience with it, then feel free to comment uh, within this issue here. Okay. And let's see, uh, looks like there is another agenda item here about uh, RDS day two stuff. Uh, Manabu, was this, was this you? Did you add this one, buddy? Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So see, I am writing a documentation guidance uh, around how or the like, considerations that you should have when, you, when you are managing RDS instances and clusters when you're using Crossplane. Um, I put most of my 
thoughts in that document. Um, but I'm just kind of looking for feedback from the community. Uh, if you have you know, experience uh, managing RDS instances uh, in your organization, and if you have uh, you know some time to uh, review it, I would highly, highly appreciate any feedback you have. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we saw this effort, um, and it looked and it looked really, really cool. Um, and so, some good. It's generating some good discussion as well on here. So, uh, yeah, this this will be a really good resource, I think, for the community. So, this is great to to be investing in this man. Uh, all right. So, I think that's all the agenda items here. So, if uh, there was anything else that folks wanted to bring up, uh, what is this going on here? I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. Hmm. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much ends it here. Um, so if anybody else wanted to add anything, we can go ahead. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. All right. Well, good to see everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for all the effort on the 1.11 release. And you know, let's cruise on into 1.12. And congratulations again to everybody that got talks accepted at KubeCon. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye, bro. Bye everybody.